Good morning. Let's confess the Word of God in faith together. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation. Jesus is Lord over the United States of America, and Jesus is Lord over all. Praise God, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Today, I hear the word of God. Blessed are my ears, for they hear, and my eyes, for they see. I have new eyes. I have the eye of faith that has been given to me by the Spirit of God. So we're looking at Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Very simple instructions on prayer from our Father, and the Holy Spirit is teaching us this. So we've um, learned to decide what we want, be specific, and that's, you know, just all through the day, but be very specific. And um, then when you pray, you go boldly into the throne room and you go in the name of Jesus and you go based only on the blood of Jesus and not on any of your works. This is a privilege that has been given to us through Jesus Christ. This is one of the things that we have inherited, a gift that we have inherited to have that right so you go in and then you ask for what you um, have desired. And let me remind you now, you don't tell him about your problems. You don't tell him the problem. You don't tell him the trouble. You don't say, oh, Lord, this, this car needs new tires. Or, oh, Lord, I need a new car. You don't tell him that. You make the request for what you desire. And so then uh, you believe you receive them at that moment when you pray, believe you receive them. Now you have them. And then you, first of all, say, I have it. I have them. They are in my possession now in Jesus name. And then you give God thanks for it right then. Thank you, Father. And now we are looking at a very important part of your faith and of your prayer life. And that is the eye of faith. Yesterday, I gave you scriptures out of Genesis where God told Abram, he says, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are to what I have given to you. And so... That's for us as well. Look from where you are into the word of God to see what God has given to you. And then again in uh, Genesis 15, he said um, to look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said, so shall your seed be. So putting before his eyes, so that his eye is the uh, another entrance way to his heart. So you have five um, gates to your spirit man. You have the eye gate, the ear gate, the taste gate, the nose gate, and the fill gate. And so I remember one time when I was believing God for a brand new car and just in faith, I said, I love the smell of new. Yes, I love the smell of new. And I just did that in faith. And it wasn't long after that, that I had a brand new automobile. So uh, use all of the senses that you have in the natural. You have those spiritual um, senses in the spirit realm, in the kingdom, in the realm of the spirit. So yesterday, we finished off talking about Jacob. And um, 
I wanted to reiterate the importance of that because God actually, I believe God gave Jacob this wisdom. But when Laban, uh, when Jacob wanted to get his wages and then leave with his family, he had worked for Laban, I, I'm thinking it was like 27 years, and Laban had changed his wages 10 times and had deceived him. And so Jacob, it was time for him to go. And so he went to Laban and asked him for his hire. And so Laban said, well, what do you want? And Jacob said, I want to take all the ring straked, all the brown, all the spotted uh, cattle with me. That will be my hire. And so let me tell you what Laban did. He took all of the ring straked, all of the spotted, and all of the brown three days journey away from the uh, white ones. And he left Jacob to tend the white ones because Jacob was still working for him. But he took all of the others away so that there was no possibility for Jacob to have any ring straight, spotted, or brown. And so what Jacob did is when the strong cattle came to the watering troughs, he peeled... Uh, rods of green poplar and he peeled the strakes in them and put them before their eyes. Did you hear that? He put them before their eyes so that when they came to water, they had to look down and what they saw, they conceived. And so his flock became greater than Laban's flock. And so Laban ended up with very few, and Jacob ended up with a lot. Saints, your eyes are very important, what you put before your eyes, even just your natural eyes. In Proverbs 4, the word says, My son, attend, give your undivided attention to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all of their flesh. And then he says, put away from you a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from you. Now, a froward mouth and perverse lips are saying anything other than what the word says. And then he says, let your eyelids look right on, ponder the path of your feet. So your eyes are very important as you look at the word of God, which is your inheritance, which is real, which is more real than anything that you see or feel. So look at the word. And then yesterday I shared with you to um, take pictures of the things that you believe for. You can even do this. My daughter did this when she was uh, a teenager because she was beginning to put on some weight and uh, she didn't like that. And so we heard um, Marilyn Hickey say to get a picture of what you desire to look like and put it on your refrigerator, put it before your eyes. So Joy went to some magazines and picked out different parts of a body and put it on the refrigerator. And she has that figure, even now at 40. I'm telling you, saints, what you put before your eyes is so valuable to what you receive from God. So put these things, most importantly, of, co of course, is to put the word of God before your eyes. And then put, uh, like, go to Mark eleven twenty four, 24, 
where he says, and you shall have them. Or 1 John 5, 14, where he says, and you have them. And Matthew 7, 7, where he says, ask and it shall be given unto you. And so since you've asked, it has been given to you. Put those words before your eyes. Feast your eyes on those words. Get your Bible. Your Bible is alive and powerful. It's not just like any other book that you've got laying around. It's full of the power and the life of God. So put your eyes, gaze your eyes, fix your eyes on them. So the next one we're going to look at The Lord um, opened this up to me as I was learning faith, and he just took me through the word so that I could see how important my spiritual eyes are. And you remember in Mark chapter 4, he said, Blessed are your eyes, for they see. So he's talking about your spirit, spiritual eye of faith. Say, I have an eye of faith. I see into the realm of the word, the realm of the spirit, because that is the realm of the word. And I see what belongs to me. And I see it. It's mine in Jesus' name. So then... Um, the children of Israel had um, crossed over the Jordan and they were ready to go in and possess the land that, not that God was going to give them, but that he had already given them. Now, let me remind you of this, that God has already given to you and me all things that pertain to, to life and godliness. And whatever you've prayed for, he has already given it to you. He's already said, yes, and so be it. It's already yours right now. It's not going to be yours. It's already yours. So um, in Joshua 6, 1, it says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of valor, and go around about the city once. And then he gave them the rest of the instructions. But the first instruction that he had was to see that I have given you the city, that I have given you the king, and that I have given you the mighty man, men of valor. They were to see that with their eye of faith. It didn't look like it, but they were. that's what they were to see. That God had given them. Now I'm going to read that again. God gave them specific instructions, just like he is giving you specific instructions right now. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And so that was their first instruction was to see it that it had already been given to them. So they had to look to the end result of what God said was theirs that it was in their possession, that it belonged to them. So, um, and that word see in the Hebrew literally means to see, to look, to gaze. So they were to look beyond what they could see. Everybody has an imagination. Well, you have a spiritual mind, a spiritual imagination. So you are to see the things in the word that belong to you. You are to see the answer to your prayer through the eye of faith. For instance, if you have believed God to pay off your house, 
than see the title deed in your hands. At one point, we had so many bills, and we just started speaking it, and I, I would write on them, paid in full, and then I would see them totally paid off. If it is an automobile, see it in your garage or your driveway. Whatever it is, if it's money, see the money in your hands. If it's your children, see them through the eye of faith as having revelation of the Word of God, of loving the Word of God, of putting the Word of God first in their minds and in their hearts. Um, so you see, if it's a marriage, see your marriage just full of love and joy and bliss in Jesus' name. So you look beyond what you see, like God told Abram to begin with, look from where you are and look to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Well, the Word of God, the Bible, is our promised land. So he said, all that you see, I have given to you. So one more, and then we'll close for today. This is uh, right after they took Jericho. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise. Go up to I. See, I have given into thy hand the king of I and his people and his city and his land. And thou shalt do to I and her king as thou did unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof. Just a minute, let me turn the page. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof you will take for a prey unto yourselves. And then he gave them specific instructions. So I want to point out something else. Do you see how specific the instructions are? And were, and they were not born again. They did not have God on the inside of them, yet God spoke so plain to them that they knew exactly what to do. Saints, expect the word of the Lord to come to you that clear to say, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. We don't have to live our lives guessing. But he did tell them the same thing. See, I have given it into your hand, her king, the people, the city, and the land. And this time he said, and, this, and all of that will be yours. Whereas the first, I believe Jericho, now the word doesn't say this. I heard a minister say this. Uh, but that Jericho was the tithe. As they went in, he said, don't touch the gold, it's mine. And so I believe that Jericho was the tithe, but um, then from then on, he allowed them to possess everything that was in there. What, what, were, what were his instructions? See, see that I have given it into your hands. Well, See that God has given, if you're believing for a city, that he has given the city into your hands by the power of God, that every person in there is born again. I'm using my faith as well. So, but going back to our prayer life, see what you've asked for in your possession, in your hands. If it's something you've lost, See it through the eye of faith that you have it in your hands. Go beyond what you can see in the natural and see it in the spirit. If it's money, see it in your possession. Well, we'll pick up on this tomorrow. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for his word. And thank God for the Holy Spirit who is teaching us these wonderful truths in Jesus' name.